Assalamualaikum and also salam sejahtera. First of all, I uh, just would like to inform that this is another uh, recording session for my uh, next class of e-commerce. And uh, therefore, uh, the topic of uh, today's uh, recording session actually is going to be different from the last one. This is actually the new topic. And then this is going to be recorded and then going to be given to students again for them to watch it. And uh, during the class, they can uh, they are required to prepare two questions and then to be asked to the lecturers. Yeah. Right. So let's start for uh, the recording session. And this time we are going to focus on another chapter. And this chapter actually is very much focusing on the e-commerce presence. Yeah. And then I'm going to explain actually what's the meaning of e-commerce presence. But anyway, uh, it's all about uh, something that related to websites. Okay. And then of course there's a mobile sites and also definitely an apps. And we are not going to talk about how to build ads and apps and everything, but definitely here I will focus on how actually a websites are uh, functioning. Yeah, and then what are the things that actually are required to be or to have in the or and what is the what the current okay uh, successful websites uh, need to have in order uh, to achieve their current. Uh, performance yeah and then uh, what are the things that actually crucial for everyone who actually would like to have a website especially uh, for their businesses and and everything okay so let's start with the first one here the first uh, slides that I have here again yeah this slides actually is only to be recorded and then after that, the slides is going to be, or the, the video will be sent to the students for them to watch before the class. And also after that, they have to prepare at least yeah, two questions okay, to be asked to the lecturer or to me. And then on that time, it's going to be uh, a session of answering and then question and answer que uh, session. Yeah? So it's not going to be boring. Okay, It's not going to be uh, another session of reading slides and everything. So And then also, again, just would like to inform that it will able to improve the uh, relationship between the students and lecturer and also definitely the interaction between both. Yeah? Because we don't want it to be like the normal one where it's just a session of uh, slides uh are being read right okay and then you know it's going, i mean we don't actually know what the students are doing especially in this online kind of things right so hopefully with this kind of method it's going to able to at least at least going to able to attract the students uh attentions a bit yeah hopefully yeah okay so what i'm doing currently is i'm doing some efforts uh in making students actually at least able to focus a little bit longer during the class yeah because without focus we actually don't will not able to know the benefits of the things that we are watching yeah so of course we are going to complain we, uh, be, but it's not because of the quality of the teaching or something like that but it's because we're not focusing on the topic so therefore we thought that it's not good but if we try to focus just a little bit it's going to attract our attentions also yeah so what actually is the best or what's the most important thing here is to be focused just for a while during the uh during the initial time of the topic or on the session and then i promise you actually there will be something that's going to attract your attentions okay and then when there is something attracted you of course then you are going to have this what we call uh what we call uh uh, something you're going to have something to ask actually and then you are going to have or going to build something in your mind that you would like to know more and because of that you're going to have a question and therefore the session like this is going to make your job easier as a student because the questions will come to you by themselves yeah, so that's why uh, the most important thing here is to focus just focus for a while okay 
I mean, don't put any negative thinking yet, right? Huh? Just focus, just for a five minutes like that, and I promise you, there will be something, something that going to attract your attention. Okay, focus, and then it will actually trigger your uh, what we call this a uh, trigger your 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 this 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 uh, 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 your your something that something that trigger you that you would like to know more. Right? Okay, because because uh, you focus on it, and then after that, automatically by itself, question will come to you, and because you want to know more, and then that's all. Once you have a question, that's it. Then during the class, you ask me the question, and I'm going to try my best to answer those questions. Yeah. Okay, and then and then also during this session, actually, I'm just going to show the um the the the, the slides there. Okay, and then the detail is going to be given during the class during your answers and questions, during the question and answer session, during the class itself. Yeah? So I'm going to show you all the examples and everything during the class. But here, during this session of recording session, okay, for our slides, I'm just going to read you or I'm just going to explain a little bit on the slides and after that, right, okay, and I'm going to, uh, we are going to focus more on everything, so examples, discussions and such during the class. It's simply because I don't want to drag the time of recording because I don't want to burden you students to watch a longer video so I don't want to do that to you right so it means I think it's better we just shorten the video okay I just give you the picture what we are going to discuss okay and for you focus on the slides focus on what I'm saying and then definitely automatically okay it will trigger your curiosity. Ah, that's what the word I was I've been looking just now. Yeah. Okay. It will trigger your curiosity. Okay. You will be curious about the topic, and automatically, when you curious, you will have the question come to you by itself. All right. Okay. So uh, I also put this uh, session on on YouTube. Yeah. Because I'm using this very good uh, software actually, which I can stream uh, maximum uh, three platforms yeah, over there uh, yeah, at the same time. So I also already give this. I mean, my students uh, the, the 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 assignment. Yeah, okay. Not this class actually for the social media marketing class. I give them assignment which they have to use this software. I give them the software for free. Yeah, hopefully that they will have this uh, motivation to use to learn. Okay, and to explore more on the software. Okay, now so let's uh, move to our topic for today, which is the building an e-commerce presence. There. And allow me to explain more about what's the meaning of building an e-commerce presence. Yeah? So presence here doesn't mean that we need to actually okay, do some things like, okay, uh, meaning that here we, we, we have to be there, okay, we have to uh, 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 we have to uh, do some presentation or something like that, okay? Or we need to, we need to exist. It doesn't mean like that. Of course, presence here means, okay, how do you inform people about your business? That's actually a presence, yeah? So when it says here, actually, okay, building an e-commerce presence, it means that how do you inform people about your existence, okay, using e-commerce platforms or using e-commerce functions and everything so that's what it means by this topic building an e-commerce presence okay so now when i explain to you this topic in this way okay only if you try to focus and then understand what i've been i mean i'm trying to inform you just now okay i'm sure it will trigger something to you okay it will actually going to trigger again this curiosity inside you yourself and then uh, automatically okay you are going to focus more, okay, and then you are going to have a questions, okay, about this topic, right? So that's what I would like to inform you now, right? Okay, I don't, I mean, it's okay if you uh, uh, fast forward the video and everything, as long as you understand what we would like to talk about, okay? So that's why the first few minutes of the video, when you are watching it, actually it's very crucial for you to understand them, yeah, in order for you to actually uh, really, really, uh, uh, have this uh, motivation to watch more on the videos and such and such. Yeah, I hope that you understand what I'm trying to uh, deliver to you uh, currently. Right? Okay, especially for students, of course. Now, when we talk about yeah these things yeah of the e-commerce presence and how to build e-commerce presence, right?
Yeah. So um, it means that here again, yeah, to make people understand presence here. Okay, it means that informing people about your existence. Okay, by using the e-commerce, then the first thing before you actually um, perform this kind of activity is you need to know what is your mission statement. Yeah, Are you, do you want to sell something or you would like to actually deliver some services? Okay, and then definitely target audience. There is nothing actually more important than targeting your audience. The problem with many businesses because they thought yeah they have to able to sell to everyone. Problem is. I always inform my students there is not one thing or one brand in this world that everybody using it. Yeah? No. Even if you said everybody drinks water, yes, of course everybody drinks water. Problem is okay, or everybody drinks mineral water, yes, everybody drinks mineral water. But so many people they don't like this brand. They prefer this brand. Okay, even though it's the same mineral water. So this is what I'm in being informed the students, okay, and also when I'm delivering trainings and everything, okay, that segmentation. When we would like to do anything, we have to target. We cannot be too greed, yeah. They cannot be greedy and then to 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 tag we would like to target everyone around the world okay it's impossible because everyone's okay have okay every every each and every person has uh uh, his or her own uh, uh, preferences. Yeah? So we don't know which one is that. Then that's why we have to target them. And then we have intent attended market space. Same also with the target audience just now. It yeah, doesn't mean that, okay, uh, when you already target audience from this place, actually, it means that you can target the same audience in the same way at the other place. No. Right? Because if take an example in terms of uh, products, yeah. Okay, it's it's so unique actually. Okay, in terms of the targeting audience, uh, in this place or in this particular place is actually that uh, most of the people who likes your products they are male. Okay, but when you go to another place, yeah, maybe in Bintulu compared to Cebu, okay, in Bintulu suddenly the, the uh, most of the people who likes your product they are female. So can you see here? Okay, this is the uniqueness. That's that's why you have to know who. Uh, who your who are your uh, customers? Okay, who are your audience and everything? So we cannot actually just put it rounding up everything. No, yeah, that's why uh, we need to know find a way to find to 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 know who are our uh, customers, who are our uh, audience, and then target them accordingly. Yeah, this is what I would like to inform, and always I try to stress out during my classes or training that I, I, I delivered. And then we have this strategic analysis also according to the target audience. Okay, of course, this one actually is the data. Okay, you have know how to read data. If you think that this is easy, okay, social media platform actually is just about posting, sharing, engaging and everything. That's totally wrong yeah? because we need another thing that provided by the social media marketing such as Facebook and everything which is data problem is yeah us yeah as malaysian maybe we never been actually stressed out i mean i'm not sure maybe our educational system never stress out the importance of data they keep asking or they keep talking or they keep saying that data is important 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 but it seems like there is no efforts in, in order to make people really understand data you cannot say just by your mouth that data is important because you don't understand it by heart right you have to understand data only by Number one, you collect them, you process them, and you interpret them. Yeah, but the problem there actually currently we only going to collect them, okay, and we do process them with a very limited kind of uh, abilities, and then when we interpret, then just according to what you can see, right? But the data, whatever data that you have, I would like to promise you that those data, most of them. They are unlimited as long as you know what to look at and look for. And then remember, each data will provide you with the problems and definitely 100% will give you the solutions. Yeah, That's what I also try to 
uh, my objective actually one of them yeah uh, which is to make people understand by heart not just understand but understand by heart the importance of data yeah and then we have this marketing metrics okay how do you do marketing and then we have development timeline this i mean first first what you do second what you do and then the third one what you do and then preliminary budget or how much you are going to spend okay these are the things before you actually thinking about to put your presence in the uh, market over there yeah especially using e-commerce right and the next one of course yeah when you would like to build your presence okay uh, in the on the internet by using e-commerce platforms or e-commerce uh, function or e-commerce uh, what we call this uh, facilities of course you need to have this analysis lah yeah but I'm not sure actually whether people really understand what is the meaning of this SWOT analysis. Yeah, mostly, I mean, business people or business students they are going to be informed by this SWOT, 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 and then they thought that actually this SWOT is just that you list up. That's the problem. There, SWOT is not about listing up. Listing up for what? Okay, you going to list up what is your strengths what is your weaknesses now come on yeah i mean we cannot list up our own okay and then because there are so many trainings before okay or around i don't know in, in our country or in in another country also actually when they go for the SWOT analysis what do they do they ask everyone actually can you please list out what are your strengths what are your weaknesses who are we who we are actually in i mean we cannot or we don't know we always try to think either positively about ourselves and negatively about ourselves but the best people okay or group who's supposed to be evaluating us actually is our 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 customers okay our audience not us yeah because if us who going to put all this list it means that this is what we call shock sendiri yeah it, we i mean we are going to think about negatively or positively about ourselves okay most of people are going to try to think about positive okay and then they're going to put it there that's why when you put list strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats and then you present it to to people okay to the audience nobody is going nobody going to care about your presentation because it's your own idea so they don't actually attracted to this data. So strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats is not is not supposed to come from you. Okay, the the, the owner of the business. Yeah, it must come from the other people. But how? It's not exactly means that you have to ask them. Okay, can you tell us actually what is our strengths? No, right? You have to actually use the data. Okay, that you collected after they perform the actions because on that things on that time okay those data will automatically tell you what are your strengths your weaknesses what are your opportunities and definitely what are your threats to your businesses this is actually the real meaning of this SWOT analysis. It doesn't mean that you have to go to one each of the person of the staff and ask them please out what uh the strengths of our companies of course they are going to be biased of course okay i mean who they are they i mean <laughs> they are not eligible to actually evaluate because it's their own company of course right they're going to put bias over there okay you have and then these things these questions you cannot ask to people no to your customers no yeah because whatever they tell you on that time okay that's what actually they think okay on that specific time but when it's the time for them to perform the action they are thinking their perspective is going to change again according to to the situation okay there are so many variables that going to change their the way of their thinking actually on that time they can hate you today but because they heard someone says actually this business is very good they will love you tomorrow also the same way or the other way around they can love you today but because of they heard something okay and then they're going to hate you tomorrow so can you see so many variables now all these things actually we cannot just do it by the uh, by by looking or by asking people okay what actually they think okay we cannot do that right and then the next one yeah about e-commerce presence map okay and this one actually is one of the uh, very good okay one of the very good kind of uh, uh, you know diagram okay or, or, or slides yeah that I, I would like to everyone to see here especially uh, students right 
that you can see there's a very uh, there are several types of presence here okay website social media email offline media it means that all these are the type of present that you use in order to tell people about your existence here okay about the business your business existence okay and then when we talk about website then there are so many other platforms of course traditional mobile tablet and everything but if you see the social media they of course social media offer the most platforms which you can use yeah you can read over there email and offline media definitely right of course it's not as much or it's not as uh, ubiquitous compared to the social media but it's still one of the options that we can have yeah and then the, those the, are, are the activities okay if you see when we talk about e-commerce presence map yeah? so it means that when you would like to plan your e-commerce presence okay now you have to see all these type of presence first and then would which one that you would like to 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 see or which one you would like to use or which one you would like to utilize okay these are the things actually that uh, what we try to uh, mention here in this topic of uh, e-commerce presence yeah and then the next one on the slides actually we can see here the most uh, important of the challenges yeah when you would like to put your uh, presence on the e-commerce actually it's very uh, you know it's, it's typical kind of uh, uh, problems that you can see there yeah number one of course uh, you need to have uh, understanding business objectives I mean this is what I really don't like actually when uh, uh, when we teach according to the slides yeah it means that okay, according to the books yeah there are so many redundancy that try to inform us uh, there are so many other things that they keep informing us again and again and again problem there if I inform the student says that the, you have to develop a clear understanding of business objective i mean what, what is the guarantee that students will understand okay uh, this sentence develop a clear understanding of business objectives right how do they understand do they really understand okay can i show them what is a clear business objectives something like that because all these things actually okay how about the business people do they really do this okay do they really develop uh, understanding business objectives of course these things they are logics okay when we would like to develop a business objective of course it will be cleared one of course we there is no business actually going to develop a very uh, a very confusing business objectives come on right books come on books yeah, okay do something that makes people makes students going to be more attracted to read your <laughs> your sentences right okay so that's why i really don't like it i mean to use slides but what to do because we have things to follow yeah? we have syllabus and such so i have to have i have to use this one okay but that's why okay i use this kind of method I record my class, okay, and then the real one is going to happen during the class itself, yeah, where the answer and question and answer sessions are going to happen, right? Okay, now, and then we have to knowing how to choose the right technology to achieve those objectives. Of course, this all these things will come automatically to you. There is no need for you to know, okay? But there are several factors that you have to consider, okay? Of course, this I agree. Number one is management, who are going to become your leader, okay? Remember again, when I talk, about you i told you about leader doesn't mean that someone with okay so much experience in this kind of world of that we are living currently right this doesn't mean that someone with the most experience is going to be the best leaders is not is that is not the case anymore someone with the best qualification is going to be the leader that is not the case anymore nowadays actually guys what we really want is someone with idea someone who knows the technology someone who knows actually how to use this technology not only by theories but it must be someone that already use it already experience it in the world of business and come and become your leader not only someone that become leader here leader their leader here and then because of all this experience and then you ask these people actually to become your leader of course that is one of the way but the best way currently is doesn't mean that we have to choose someone with experience because experience i'm sorry can be obsolete it can be expired that's the problem that no matter how long experience that you have 50 years 60 years even 100 years all those experience can actually be expired yeah 
So that's why you can see that the 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 how I mean if you don't believe me, look at those workers actually at at Facebook or, or in Google over there, right? Okay, I mean, can you see uh, all people working there? <laughs> right? Do you see their manager is like like someone with forty, fifty, sixty years old? No, okay. I mean they are teenagers, right? Okay, and then okay as long as and then there are someone who who who, who I mean, like nowadays as long as I mean someone with uh, 15 years old or 20 years old can become a leader already because of what they know, right? Okay, there are so many things actually I share on the internet there. Yeah, how 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 actually the, the young generation currently become a leader because of how innovative they are, how creative they are, right? Compared to the knee, right? Okay, so something that I want you to understand. Okay, so of course the main factors there, this one is management. Hard way is definitely, okay, it's common sense. Okay, hard way, okay, for your, uh, for your, uh, you know, components and everything. Software definitely, which we are going to look at here later. Design of your presence there, how you would like to actually put it. You have a theme or something like that. Telecommunication, of course, is redundant. Yeah, it's, they're always informing there. And then human resources. Yeah, okay, who you're going to choose to work with you. And we have another one which is called the system development life cycle. Okay, and then this one I would like to inform you according to this diagram here. But before that, let's read this. Yeah, methodology for understanding business objectives of a system and designing an appropriate solution. A methodology for understanding business objectives. So it means that once you have business objectives, then the first thing that you have to do is you have to have these steps. Number one, yeah, you already have your idea. You already have your business objectives. Objectives. Now you would like to build your system. So in order for you to build your systems, okay, then let's look at this diagram here, yeah, or the slides here. As you can see there, right? Okay, the first thing first, of course, the most basic thing actually is to analyze the system. You plan them, yeah. You see, I mean, you see, I mean, you see what is the going to be the 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 expected problems going to happen okay and then how to uh, solve them or something like that that's it's a system so when you want to build a system now i would like to inform people here actually right what's the meaning of system your system means next example that you would like to combine your so your website and then you would like to put so many other function inside your website such as such as a uh, message functions okay a uh, live updating functions and then you want to also combine your your social media platforms into your websites and then also you would like to put data into your systems there where people actually can just look at it and then they can choose which data they would like to see and everything now, all these things we call a system take an example of nike they have a very good kind of system in their website yeah before i don't know whether it's available today or not where people can just go to their websites okay and then people themselves able to actually design the shoes that they want okay the colors what design they want to put inside okay nike or uh whether where they want to put the swoosh uh, logo of nike okay and what colors they have or they want which pattern they want okay they can choose by themselves and nike will make those shoes or that shoes according to their design so can you see now this is the system that nike has okay so they build a system in their website this is system actually right and after that you have a design or system design over there right so once you analyze and then you put the design there okay how you would like to looks like okay what the theme that you would like to have okay and then or you like to be unique compared to the others because if you go to the Google website, the Google website is just white colors there. Okay, if you don't believe me, just go to Google Ads, type Google, can you see it's just white? Yeah, but no problem for them because everybody knows who I, who they are already. Yeah, but for your own website, you just started, then you cannot just do like Google because of course once people went to your website, they see all white, they go out. Right, okay, so you cannot do that. You have to put something, you have to design them very good. Okay. And then we, after we have the design, then let's build the system. Okay, start with the uh, uh, website just now, and then we make the website alive. Yeah, 
let's viral it by and then this also called testing it okay and then see what the people going to talk or going to say about the system and after that okay you implement all the services inside okay so it means that okay you are going to make it the final one but can you see there's actually one error there that come from implementation service delivery it's go back to the system analysis it's a data management theory once you already implement everything that you planned before and then your plan already uh, become live now it's time to reanalyze the data and see what's the problem and then what's actually currently happened what's actually the solution and everything you have to reanalyze them so that's what this this big error here means yeah and the next one there we can say okay um they are when we talk about uh systems then we need to have a software we, without a software we then we cannot call it as an e-commerce systems okay but when we talk about e-commerce software yeah especially for the e-commerce websites right because i would like to take the example here system as a website because in the website you can put many things inside yeah you can put all the things yeah so that's why yeah i would like to take the example here as a website okay as a system right so you have to remember systems doesn't mean that okay uh it's 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 something that it's uh limited to something no systems mean okay we build something okay and to to make the process easier okay and then uh it consists of uh order or it con consists of uh uh, what we call uh, uh, it's synchronized from one another one to another it's it consists of steps okay step one step two step three so those what we call systems actually yeah so like the systems inside a business of course we can call it system meaning that here how do we approve the application how do we actually uh, you know uh, analyze things okay those requires a system which it uh it needs a step one step two step three and so on yeah so that's what the system means so in this part or in this example i would like to use website as the example of the systems okay now when we talk about system especially website okay of e-commerce you need a software and then the software here from the what what being in uh show to us by this uh what we call slides here yeah it says that provides basic functionality for sales of course when you would like to sell yeah You're selling your product or selling your services yeah so first you need to have online catalog of course it's an online catalog and it's the online catalog since you want it to be interactive so you need a software okay you cannot just actually show them some pictures and words okay so you these things you must be interactive once they see this picture they can click it they click they go to another place they in another place they go to another another according to what they want and after that in the end okay since they already have so much information then they make decision to buy okay so that's how actually this online catalog supposed to be it's not supposed to be just talking about this talking about that yeah it must be interactive okay interactive means according to what the customers want they click they being brought into another place and then after that they want another other information there is an option over there that actually going to allow them to click and going to brought them to another location yeah, according if they want okay more and more and more so that's is interactive and this actually need a software right okay and then we have shopping cart of course shopping cart okay they can put it like shopee or lazada lah. okay we can put it in our shopping cart first okay because we don't want to lose it and after that when we have the money okay when we uh, actually really need it then we, there's no need for us to search it search for it anymore and then we can just buy it okay and then also from there you can actually make the payment and then you have this one uh, facilities you you are provide to the customers such as like credit card processing also we call it e-payment gateway yeah? okay so all this one of course online catalog shopping card yeah the credit card processing this so we need payment yeah we cannot make by yourself yeah you need another software which you have to pay services okay that provides this kind of function or software yeah and then we have this uh, of course integrated environment that includes most of the functional functionality needed of course 
also another words for integration or another words for interactive yeah, such as shopping cart, merchandise display and order management yeah. so all these things you can see from the Shopee when you make purchase from the Shopee yeah, or the Lazada of course or any e uh, marketplaces uh, website right? or e-commerce website and then we have this uh, server software uh, example right uh, i've been uh, delivering training for this actually the training actually that that, that uh, show people how to build a website using yeah many of these uh, example that we currently being shown to you by these uh, slides yeah number one uh, of course it's according to how big your businesses are yeah but of course since i most of the time delivering a training to businesses okay from different kind of uh, sizes so uh, i did actually uh, uh, introduce to them and show them how to build your, their website on shopify okay and then the big commerce over there and then also i have the site core and also this uh web commerce okay okay or like 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 the like the uh, oh no i don't have this high end actually yeah the high end actually i don't familiar with it yeah maybe because it's going to need uh so much another uh, kind of a budget yeah but for the small and medium size we and then also the mid-range there i did uh deliver my trainings okay for them to know how to build a website using this software yeah so this is what we call that one it's actually not really software like shopify it's not a software it's a it's a website yeah but that's what is important actually because they need to know okay what how to build their own website how to build their own e-commerce website yeah so we need to actually really really try to tell them the businesses that how important these things are yeah next one actually we have this um we have this oh sorry hold on yeah all right okay that's the software and the next one we have what we call of course yeah everybody knows this one a hard way hard way is needed because when we talk about e-commerce then you need a server okay when we talk about server of course it's a computer okay so when you talk about computer so what else is needed yeah inside a computer of course it's uh, the hard way right so the hard way is the most important thing so you have to choose your hard way there's a platform for hard way and then the objective actually yeah so what for me in terms of businesses when you would like to choose your own hard way it's very easy it depends on the size of your business right so if your size of business actually is still small you just started and everything then okay you can just uh, try to uh to to, to uh, you know lower your cost or lower your budget okay by using just maybe a mid-range of kind of a uh, computer uh, uh, specifications yeah okay something like that okay according okay to your businesses actually now the next one here okay we talk about scalability what is a scalability actually scalability here is actually okay talking about the ability of your uh, what we call this of your the ability of your software and hardware yeah to follow the current trend okay this is scalability the, it's scalability again it's what we call the uh, ability okay yes what it says the ability of site to increase in size as demand warrants okay so it means that the bigger you are also you have to increase your uh, performance yeah um, we don't want to become like dg like cellcom or <laughs> many of other this uh, uh line providers yeah okay especially dg or cellcom like that because as we can see there's their 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 business okay or their services be getting uh getting worse and worse yeah okay uh, day by day it's not because of they i mean they don't have a uh, good technology no it's just because that they uh the 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 current size of their uh hardware actually not able to cater the demands yeah so it means that of course the some place 
Cellcom is good someplace, Maxis is good someplace, DG is good, yeah. So of course the the people in in this place says, oh, he, DG is very good. Okay, but over there says, oh, DG is the worst. Okay, Cellcom is better. In other place also the other way around and such and such. So it's actually there's nothing good or bad. The only difference between these uh, line providers is their packages okay what do they offer or something like that but the most things here actually that you i would like to inform everyone yeah as long as they able to improve or they have a good scalability uh, level yeah so it means that they can just try to add their capacity of services so everyone will able to get the same good services yeah so that's the problem that they just don't have maybe they don't have enough budget or maybe they just want to lower their cost or something like that yeah but their scalability is very bad yeah at some places not all places some places yeah and then we have uh, another thing here says that uh, uh, ways to scale the hardware yeah or way for us to actually measure the hardware number one in uh is either that we do it vertically which is we increase the processing power of individual components yeah maybe we want like to increase the memories maybe we would like to increase the processor the performance the graphics and everything or we would like to do it in terms of horizontally which is means we do in terms of the workload we put more machines there okay and in order to share the workload so this is what's supposed to be done by dg cellcom maxis and everything yeah they can choose either to improve their services of their hardware vertically again yeah by actually increase the processing power of the components itself okay one components okay and or they can just actually add the number of components in order to share the workload but the objective here to make the service faster okay yeah? that's what it means and then we have to improve processing architecture or outsource hosting okay that's why yeah, if dg or cellcom or maxis not able to do it by themselves they can outsource all these things but they are doing it currently they are also outsourcing all the things but the problem they still not able to be uh, solve the problems there yeah? Okay, and then uh, when we talk about vertical and horizontal scaling techniques here, and then you can look at here, yeah, I already explained just now, but the example, you can see it here. Example here, use a faster computer. That means that, okay, it means you try to increase it vertically, yeah? Use a faster computer. Create a cluster of computers, ah, that one actually related to horizontally, okay, something like that. Yeah. And then we move to another one. We have this e-commerce website. Okay, you can read this by yourself. Yeah, what are the features that annoy customers when we talk about website, especially e-commerce website? And then please look at all these features. Okay. These features, most of them, most not all, most of them actually don't exist in Shopee or Lazada. Yeah. Because they know now as long as but when we talk about Lazada or Shopee, the first time you went to Shopee, you're going to get confused. I mean, yes, I, I, I agree on that one. But that's actually the best things about the Shopee because the stickiness, the level of stickiness or the level or the time people spend on Shopee makes them, whether they like it or not, become very uh, fami familiar with their systems yeah? they know already know how to buy how to cancel how to request for refund okay how to add money how to use using uh, Shopee pay and such and such okay and then of course yeah when you have already the opportunity to become a Shopee seller definitely yeah there's the Shopee seller yeah which you have to create and then uh, your account at the seller center and then you can use that platforms in in order to sell your own products or you can just do this drop shipping kind of methods this also one of the uh, assignment that I give to my students yeah so they will be familiar with that and again then we have this uh, yeah and uh, some another features that annoy customers please uh, read uh, carefully those features yeah 
And then we have these eight most important factors in successful e-commerce site design. Also, actually, just information I want to give you, okay? And all these uh, things, functionality, informational, and such and such. Okay, don't be misunderstood. I mean, f informational is very good, okay? But when it's too much information, also will make people annoyed, yeah? So you have to be careful with that, yeah? And then, okay, we have the personalization tools. Okay, this is the most important thing actually when we would like to put our presence in the system, especially a website. Remember what I told you about the example of uh, Nike just now where people can do things by themselves. They can actually create their own shoes, okay? And then Nike will help them to create according to what they want, colors, design, and everything. And those shoes will be sent to them. Yeah, so this is what we call the personalization tools here. Okay, personalization ability to treat people based on personal qualities and prior history with sight. Yeah, so what like what Nike did actually, there's no need even for them to know who their customer are because now you can just do what you want. We also can do this in terms of the, I mean. Education, yeah? education can be so good if the students can come to the university and choose, yeah, which actually they want which subject they would like to learn and then the university can say that choose which subject that you would like to learn right and then they've been given like i don't know 100 choices and then they can choose which one they want i mean that's one of the features of course it's difficult but it's not impossible right of course it needs more resources but still not impossible and one of the idea that can yeah being you know yeah, uh, discuss or something like that. Yeah, Let's take an example of Asia. Why Asia actually? Of course, like before the pandemic. Yeah, why Asia actually compared to the mass? Yeah, mass actually is is a national, uh, national uh, what we call uh, consumer consumer. Uh, you know, uh, air transportation, right? Okay, they are the national one. Malaysian actually backing them up, but even before Asia. So many times that this Malaysian airlines almost go bankrupt. Okay, they keep changing their CEO again and again and again. Yeah, all these people with experience, yeah, so called, right? Okay, but until today, even though the experienced CEO came from, you know, as a foreigner, also cannot. I mean, still the AA, I mean, Malaysia airlines actually is at the same level, yeah, like they are ten years ago. Yeah, almost bankrupt here and there. Right, but what happened actually, can you see in, in terms of the A Asia, right? They are private, no backup from the government whatsoever. I mean, until before, lah, until the pandemics and such and such. Okay, how do they able to do that? I mean, well, I'm not sure, but if you ask me actually, yeah, and then if you ask people with data, okay, like to see data, they can see something there. Yeah, take an example of when you would like to buy tickets from A Asia compared to the mass. Yeah, of course, you keep saying that mass give you the food, mass give you this, mass, mass give you a better uh, a, a luggage offer. You can just uh, no need to buy because you have a maximum 30 kilograms or 20 kilograms or something like that. But A Asia, you have to choose, yeah, from what first click to the second click, third click even you have to choose your seats yeah and then if you you even have to pay if you would like to choose your seats yeah but must no once you buy the ticket the only thing you have to choose is when right not not where you have to sit because you already have your seats you even can change according if you, if there is any availability but what makes asia actually is very good yeah because without we knowing it yeah with their method of this personalization they able to lower their cost as simple as that and now we know that when it come to travel by a well people don't really care well, so, more, so some people they really care about uh, how comfortable they are but it seems like most people they don't really care about comfortability i mean what they care actually they arrive at their destination comfort or not that's another thing to say Unless maybe they have to actually go through a very long flight. But if we talk about within Malaysia, I mean, what is about, what is one or two hours, right? No problem at all. So that's what the Asia have been thinking. Yeah? That's why they are actually the best low-cost, you know, airlines lah, or something like that. 
So that's what they are claiming, right? So this is what I want the students to understand, yeah? And then it's really related to these personalization tools, right? Well, okay, of course, all it's also related to the things called uh, when we are uh, yeah, another segmentation, yeah, personalization, okay? To who that you would like to show these features, to, okay? To who you want to show these functions to, yeah, and such and such. And then last but definitely not least, then we have these unique features that must be taken into account when designing a mobile. Oh, this is sorry, mobile presence. Yeah, we're not touching the mobile presence because if you really uh, get used with the website, now websites also at the same time offering you the mobile presence. Yeah, so we don't really need to see this because it's almost the same with the uh, website. Okay, and website itself actually already cover bots, which is the viewers using desktop or computers and viewers that using mobile phone and then remember yeah most of the viewers okay on the social media googles even of website and everything 90 80 to 90 percent came from mobiles yeah so you have to be uh, consider mobiles okay viewers okay when you build a system okay so yes that's all thank you very much okay for all the uh, attention given okay and then uh, kindly to watch this video okay kindly to watch this video watch it okay until finish okay and then after that uh, during the class okay uh, you have to prepare at least two questions and then we are going to interact during the class please uh, ask me a question that have this higher level thinking of, of uh, yeah, critical uh, critical thinking of a uh, higher level thinking uh, uh, questions yeah not the question that uh, you can find the answer on Google Google or something like that yeah it must be a question that actually very much uh, related to your level as a university students yeah undergraduate students so let's discuss let's debate okay when you have a question if you can find the question on the internet or do answer the on the internet okay why don't we have a debate over there okay you give me your opinion I give my opinion and let the other decides whether which one they want to accept yeah so that is the best way for us to improve our knowledge to improve especially one thing that the most important your communication skills yeah your social skills because i'm worried now not only that because we have to go through this online method in the uh, uh we call this one uh delivering class yeah but can you see okay the uh, the drawbacks of it actually it's because now it's going to lesser your opportunity okay in order to uh, improve your communication skills yeah in the class okay and then your social skills also which is more very more very much important because when you would like to participate in these social media platforms and everything yeah at least you need to have the social skills the real social skills when you have to be socialized with the real people face to face yeah because it's going to be different from when we socialize with people uh, you know through the computer or through the social media or internet yeah okay so thank you very much again that's all for today i hope that again please watch the video until finish and prepare at least two questions yeah during the class that's all thank you very much and i see you during the class okay bye bye